Good morning, everybody. So I was um, led this morning to one of Bishop Jakes' videos. Um, of course, he was describing this whole situation that was going on with me because he's been a part of it. The one thing that I respect about Bishop Jakes, and, and I really want to say this publicly, is that he has no problem attacking me, but he has no problem looking at himself as well. And I'm exactly the same way. I have no problem going back at anybody. And why is that? Because I know who I am. I know who I am. And um, I also have no problem looking at myself to see what my faults are. I'm going to put this video in the description, but I want to play a little portion of it so I can help you understand exactly who I am and why what has been happening to me out here is so egregious. And I'm not crying poor me. I'm setting the record straight. I'm setting the record straight. Chapter 19, verse 1 through 10 in the NIV, and it reads as follows. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man that was there by the name of Zacchaeus, he was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see he wanted who he wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he was what? Because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed the sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. Oh, do you believe Jesus is coming your way? This, this next part of an A clause of a sentence possessed me. When Jesus reached the spot, that, that, that's it right there. When Jesus reached the spot, Zacchaeus had already gotten there, but when Jesus reached the spot. He looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. So this is what has happened. Um, he's using the term Zacchaeus was short, meaning he was a sinner. He had his own idiosyncrasies. Uh, people didn't re regard him as um, a spiritual being or a believer or anything else. As they said, he's a sinner. But what did Jesus say? Jesus said, come down from there. Leave your sin. Turn away from your sin. I'm coming to your house. Um, where I stand in, in the reality, the existential reality, this is the house. So Jesus said, turn away from your sin. I'm coming to your house. We see for me, Jesus did that. And I was already there. I was in the midst of a nervous breakdown and benzodiazepine withdrawal syndrome from being poisoned by psychiatrists for over 30 years on clonopin for anxiety due to severe PTSD due to severe abuse. So like Zacchaeus, I was already there. Crying out to God to take me home or make this pain stop. And Jesus said, come down from there. I'm coming to stay at your house today. And he put me through a four-year dark night of the soul. <laughs> but Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus 
said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house because this man. And I did the same exact thing. I will do whatever you say, Lord, to stop this pain. I had given up the world at that very moment. I had turned away from the world. My entire life was for Jesus Christ at that moment. And Jesus entered this house. Two is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Can you say amen? Take me back up to... So, that is exactly true. This is what I've been out here saying this whole time. Uh, while all of these uh, pseudo pastors are, are um, putting Christians on a pedestal above everybody else, um, not even understanding that the majority of Christians are not even truly saved because they're still out living in their sinful lives. And they don't care about saving Christians. They don't care about saving the lost. All they care about is is getting that name out there, getting more followers on YouTube. That's what they care about. Getting more people to send them money. That's what they care about. And attacking anybody out here who speaks the truth. Because it shows just how much they don't care about the lost. Okay? This is what is happening out here. He knows exactly what's happening to me right now. He knows exactly what's happening. On your way down to your seat, tell your neighbor, I gotta hit the spot. Holy Spirit, speak in this place today. Gratify yourself. Here's what I would like to say about it. It's not that I will I will not worry about all these people that are attacking me. It's all these people that are attacking me that are supposed to be attacking me because the more they attack me, the deeper I go into the Holy Spirit. They are doing exactly what they are supposed to be doing. These are the demons attacking the light. They're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. So the more they attack me, the deeper I go into the Holy Spirit. Establish yourself, extend yourself, magnify yourself, electrify, illuminate, declare yourself in such a dynamic way that we are left awed by the presence of your glory. I thank you in advance for what you're about to do. I believe you, oh God, to have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dr. Maya Angelou is known to have quoted this statement, which has become a, a household uh, reflection of some of the many granular wisdom thoughts that she left as grains of sand in time that extend beyond death. She says, when a person tells you who they are, believe them and this grain of wisdom is quite profound and quite prolific it is quite impactful it helps us to understand the sociological impact that we have dealing with people the psychology behind people to understand that when a person tells you who they are to believe them uh, not to argue with them not to be have such a messiah complex that you are trying to turn 
water into wine. Leave that for Jesus. It is what it is. Here's his mistake. Um, he thinks that, that these pastors are trying to have a Messiah complex to turn water into wine as if I need these pastors to turn me into anything. Um, this is the joke of it all. This is the joke of it all. No, he also says in here that Jesus was alone. It takes, uh, I'll, I'll let you hear what he says. It takes being separate, it takes being alone to build greatness. Well, I am, I, I am on eight years alone, and greatness is being built. As I told you, God initiates the dark night of the soul. It's not human initiated, it's God initiated. Everything that, that connected me to the world had been stripped away from me. And I had, in fact, turned away from the world. Of course, I had free will. I could have chosen to go right back into the world. But in eight years, I have never done that. In eight years, I have never done that. And I, I've literally had this bishop say to me, um, you're, you're walking away from life. Uh, what you're saying and doing is not is not going to keep you warm at two o'clock in the morning, as if I need sex. You understand that they are speaking from the sleep. They are speaking from the sleep, and yet they feel that they are in a position to judge me. That they are in a position to do a miraculous change of turning water to wine. Here's the difference here. While well, all of these people ran out to be pastors, to get well known, to have a following, uh, Isaiah's been showing uh, videos of him at 19 years old with people all over his living room instead of being alone with God and going deeper into himself to actually know who he is. No, he went right out into the world. He went right out into the world. And so what are these people doing to me now? They are abusing me and attacking me, saying that, what have I done with my life? What have I done? Where's the fruits? Where's the fruits? Well, you see, it all depends on what kind of fruit you're looking for. If you're looking for the mammon fruit of money, name, and fame, following. No, I don't have it don't have it if you're looking for the Jesus fruit it's overflowing it is absolutely overflowing they don't know what the Jesus fruit is they don't know what the Jesus fruit is because if they did they could never be out here attacking anybody and the kicker of all of this um, it was one of Sam Vaknin's teachings, of course, this is where I learned all this stuff about narcissists, uh, is that when they're called out, when narcissists are called out for their bad behavior, they flip the script and all of a sudden they become the victims. And the victim is portrayed to everybody else as the abuser. Well, see, you all know Sam Vaknin. He has no problem telling you he's a narcissistic psychopath. Well, he's actually telling on himself because this is exactly what he does. Okay? And this is exactly what all of these pastors have done. This is what is throwing me for a loop. This is what is throwing me for a loop. Here's the, here's the one thing that stood out to me yesterday with Daniel Adams joining in this, this fiasco at why he is throwing away his name and, and his ministry. I don't understand. I truly don't understand this other than Satan's got him. He's out for that name and fame. He's out for that money. This is not about Jesus Christ. And uh, because here's the thing. I literally came out here and said to everybody that I had been watching Daniel Adams and I had just found him. I didn't know who he was. I had just found him. And I said by watching him, the really big demons were starting to break loose here. And um, I, so I was telling people from 
the mystics community and the occult that were watching my pages who he was. He would have gotten so much business, it wouldn't have been funny. It wouldn't have been funny. But what did he do? What did Daniel Adams do? What was his free will choice? He chose to stand on the stage of a church in Las Vegas and join these demonic pastors and say that I was a witch. And twist my teaching that I did that day. And made a total jerk of himself. And what was the reason for that? Had I attacked Daniel Adams, I most certainly had not. I was praising him. He was the one who attacked me. The same as Signorelli was the one who attacked me. Why? Because I warned everybody there really was a third eye and it was very dangerous. And that meditation helped me heal and stop the visual flashbacks of PTSD. And for that, because Signorelli said meditation was evil and there was no such thing as a third eye that the, the, the New Age is lying to you. No, I had to correct the record because I knew the truth. And you see, this is why the Lord chose me, because he knew that I would stand on the truth and nobody was going to bully me into lying. So what are, what are my fruits? My fruits are what you're seeing. I am in the existential reality. I had no desire to go out and be of the world, which is what every single one of these pastors have done. So they have no space to even, they don't even know who they are. They, st they still think they're those people, they're, they're, they're titles. That's what they think. I saw a video by Pagani yesterday screaming like a lunatic about his title, that he wants to be his title. It's like, this is mine, 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 mine. This is mine, 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 mine. Do you know what that screams of? Sleep, personhood. And, and these are the... This is why I'm saying people of the world attract other people of the world. All of these followers that these people have are still asleep because these so-called apostles and pastors are still asleep. And yet their egos are so huge. They think, and this is why they're Pharisees, they think that they can judge a realized being as the Pharisees in Jesus' time thought that they were in a position to judge Jesus Christ. So let's listen a little bit more to what the bishop has to say. You will notice the enemy tempted Jesus to turn the rock to bread, but if it's a rock, it's a rock. And some of us are bent on turning people into what we want them to be rather than to accept them as they are. So, Dr. And here's the real wisdom for what he just said, which he absolutely just showed that he is still in the sleep. He is still of the world, and he is still in personhood. You see, we don't want to turn people into what, what we want them to be, that we should accept them as they are. No, no, no the main wisdom here is that you don't look to change anybody. The only person you need to change is yourself. And if every single one of us would go inside and look to change ourselves, to wake up out of the sleep, this is how all of this abuse is going to stop out here. It's the fact that they're all looking at me instead of looking at themselves that is the proof beyond anything else that they're all still in the sleep. The wisdom pearl here is that you should not be looking to somebody else to see how you can change them or you should accept them as they are. The pearl here is that you should be looking at yourself and every day how can you be more like Jesus today than you were yesterday, which none of these people are doing. Concluded when people tell us who they are, believe them. The reality, however, however, is.
because most people don't know who they are. And I, I'm, I'm sitting here dumbfounded. Can you see the projection? Probably most of you cannot. Can, I can see the projection. It's unbelievable. Most people don't know who they are. No, Bishop thinks he's a bishop. He thinks he's his title. He's totally of the world. And he thinks it's okay for him to attack me. It's not. It's not. What he ha oh, I can't say him. Because he does do introspection. He absolutely does do introspection. He has come out and made videos saying that um, he was triggered. He was this. He was that. He absolutely does do introspection. He's the only one out of these pastors who does do dis introspection. I have to give him that much. I respect him for that. So it is not that you meet people so often who have a definitive that describes accurately and profoundly who a person is, but rather, in fact, you have most people who have a question, not an exclamation point over their head because they are uncertain about who they are. They're not foolish or ignorant, simply evolving. Simply trans. See, he believes he's, he's saying about me, I'm not foolish or ignorant. I don't have the right words to speak. Uh, he thinks he speaks so eloquently because all the sleepers get all riled up by what he says. Um, not stupid or ignorant. Just have a question mark uh, after their name because they don't know who they are. Well, it, 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 as a matter of fact, you see, I keep telling you guys this. The existential reality is an exact paradox to what you ever believed was the truth. The reality is I am the one who has the exclamation point near my name. These people are the ones who have the question mark because they still believe they are their titles. They still believe they are their gender. They still believe that this 3D world is reality. They don't understand what the truth is. I am the one who has the exclamation point after my name. I know without a doubt who I am. I am a child of God. I am a spirit being residing in a physical form. I am a spirit having a human experience. That is who I am. There's no question about that for me any longer. So in fact, the tables have flipped. The truth is the exact opposite to what he is saying. This is what I've been saying out here the whole time. But he believes in his wisdom that he's analyzing me. Okay? Simply vessels of clay spinning on a wheel, touched by a master, who it does not yet appear what they shall be. And so when we ask him who... In fact, he is not yet who he shall be. These pastors are not yet who they shall be. Uh, I have been touched by the master, and for eight years, I have been only touched by the master. I have not gone back into the world. I have not tried to build up a following. I have not tried to put out a name out here for myself. I've only been touched by the master. The father, the son, the Holy Spirit. That's what I mean. The father, the son, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> 